Hi, I'm Perry Claussen. Today we're going to talk about orchard spray drift management and protecting surface water. There are three main ways that insecticides can get into waterways. One is storm water runoff after an application of insecticides. Another is irrigation drainage after a spray application is made to a field. The third way that pesticides can get into waterways is through spray drift, whether the spray is applied by land or by air. When any of these three, stormwater runoff, irrigation drainage, or spray drift occur, surface waters can be impacted. Spray drift is especially a concern when an orchard is adjacent to a river, canal, or other type of drainage leading into a stream or a river. So how big a problem is spray drift from orchards into creeks and rivers? In 2004, when we started sampling, I was thinking, we'll show the water board that our problems that are not as big as they think. The East San Joaquin Water Quality Coalition was formed in 2003 to represent landowners in Madera, Merced, Stanislaus, Tuolumne, and Mariposa counties. We've been performing water sampling of creeks and waterways for the last 10 years. In 2007, the results were shocking. Every one of our waterways had pesticide levels that exceed the state limit for those products. So when we find two or more exceedances of any constituent in a waterway, we have to put that waterway in what's called a management plan. What the management plan requires is determine where the pesticides are coming from and what practices could be causing that exceedance. Once we figured out how those pesticides were getting into waterways, we started meeting with growers to talk to them about practices that they could implement to prevent that problem from happening. As growers have implemented these best management practices, they have been very effective in actually eliminating the exceedances that we found in those years of sampling. Now I'm going to talk about those best management practices, or BMP for short, with you. There are two major areas in which you can control the impact of insecticides on surface water. Farm site BMPs and pesticide application BMPs. When it comes to farm site BMPs, the most effective method is to create a buffer zone between your crop and any sensitive areas like waterways, streets, buildings, or other sensitive sites. A pesticide label will state the distance that you need to be away from a sensitive area. For example, an air blast sprayer may have a 50-foot buffer between an application area and a sensitive site. Aerial applications could have up to 300 feet between that application site and a waterway. Another approach is to plant grass in the drainage areas around the perimeter of an orchard. That helps to be a natural filter of pesticides when they are dissolved in the water. It's not a fix, but it does help. And then vegetated filter strips is the same principle, essentially allowing grass to be grown at the edge of an orchard when the stormwater runoff passes through that grass after a storm. The fourth and final farm site method is irrigation drainage management. Here you want to maximize the amount of time between when you apply the insecticide and when you irrigate. As soon as a pesticide is applied to a field, it begins to break down. So the more time that passes between the application and your irrigation event, the less impact the pesticide will have on the drainage water. Likewise, you want to be aware of weather and don't apply right before a storm because that storm runoff could carry that pesticide into a waterway. These farm site BMPs can make a huge difference. Now we'll address the BMPs for insecticide applications to orchards. This is a characterization where the drift goes. It can only blow off, fall on the ground, or run off from the orchard. Studies have shown that spray drift can move up to 300 feet from the edge of an orchard if even a slight wind is blowing away from the orchard. There are several factors that influence spray drift, but only a few that you can control when you're in the orchard. Wind speed is something that can't be controlled, but you can manage how you spray when there is a wind blowing. You can spray so that the direction of any drift will be away from a waterway. The other approach is you can wait till the wind dies down and then go to those areas that are near the waterway to do your spray application. The ideal wind speed for an application is zero to six miles per hour. The two things that you do have control over are the droplet size and the release height. The finer the droplet size and the higher they are released from the sprayer, the further those droplets can drift. There is an orchard spraying method called Gear Up Throttle Down. First developed by Cornell University researchers for tractor fuel savings, this approach has been studied for the last several years with commercial orchard sprayers in California by Franz Niederholzer and Carolyn Pickle with the University of California Cooperative Extension. 
The idea here is that you run your PTO sprayer at a lower RPM, but a higher gear to maintain or increase speed. Lower RPM decreases your sprayer fan speed and the air blast going beyond the canopy. Larger nozzles are used to maintain the same gallons per acre spray volume at lower pressures and higher ground speed. Fuel and time are saved with the system, plus drift is reduced with larger spray drops and less fan air. Curers and the University of California recently completed field studies and found that the gear up throttle down method is very effective in reducing spray drift in orchards. These studies found that there was very little drift measured 75 feet from the edge of the orchard, but with a standard method, sizable amounts of drift were measured at 75 feet and beyond. It also turns out that the gear up throttle down method saves time and fuel, providing an additional cost savings on diesel of up to 40% and quicker completion of an orchard spray job. In a minute, we'll review the results of a study on modified gear up throttle down and the control of navel orange worm in almonds. The second practice for managing spray drift is called inward only spraying. The greatest potential for spray drift is when you're spraying the outside two rows, which is really a concern if there's a sensitive site, such as a waterway close enough to the orchard where drift can move into it. The idea with inward only is that when you spray row one from the outside of the orchard, you are spraying inward only. Then between rows one and two, you spray row two inward only while the nozzle pointing toward row one are shut off. This of course means that the inward side of row one is not sprayed. This approach should reduce drift downwind of the orchard. In a study last summer in a Central Valley almond orchard, we compared a modified gear up throttle down and the inward only spraying techniques against a conventional orchard spray application made at two miles per hour and 100 gallons per acre. The modified gear up throttle down program used four miles per hour and 100 gallons per acre but no change in engine settings due to the use of an engine drive sprayer. Cure staff work with the University of California insect and application experts Frank Zalem and Franz Niederholzer to complete the study under real life orchard conditions. We staged the study to coincide with treatments for navel orange worm and almonds. We applied a pyrethroid insecticide called bifenthrin or Brigade, its commercial name. In the 40 plus acre mature almond orchard, we had four replicas of each spray application method. Spray deposition measurements were collected at 8 and 16 feet in the tree canopy in the outermost rows of the orchard. Four replicas were collected from each practice. We also placed alpha cellulose pads at distances of 25, 50, 75, and 100 feet from the edge of the orchard. We collected the deposition and spray drift samples at the same time as the navel orange worm efficacy samples from each replicate. Efficacy of the spray treatments was evaluated by attaching navel orange worm eggs onto fresh green almonds, which were then hung at 8 and 16 feet in the almond tree canopy prior to the application. After the application was complete, the eggs were taken back to the lab. They were then carefully placed in a petri dish, allowed to hatch, and put on an artificial diet. After 14 days, they were checked to see how many hatched and survived. Then, 1 and 14 days after the treatment, we went back to the orchard and picked more nuts at a height of 8 and 16 feet, brought them back to the lab, pinned eggs to the nuts, allowed the eggs to hatch, then measured infestation after six weeks. So what were the results? The data showed that spray drift was definitely reduced with the inward only and gear up throttle down techniques in comparison to the conventional approach. The distance the spray drift moved from the edge of the orchard was dramatically lower with the gear up throttle down and inward only applications in comparison to the conventional application method. The study also confirmed a fact shown in previous studies by the Spray Drift Task Force. That is, 92 to 94 percent of spray drift lands within 50 feet of the orchard edge. As for the control of navel orange worm eggs, the gear up throttle down method provided comparable control to the conventional spraying approach at both the 8 and 16 foot heights in the tree. 
Most disappointing was that the inward only did not provide adequate control in row one at 16 feet in comparison to the gear up throttle down or the standard approach. You can see here the dramatic difference between the gear up throttle down application and the inward only application. Gear up throttle down in fact performed as well as the standard approach for control of navel orange worm in this particular study. The conclusion of the study is that gear up throttle down and inward only methods did in fact reduce drift as compared to conventional treatments in this study. Efficacy for control of navel orange worm is comparable between modified gear up throttle down and conventional treatments. However, there was poor control of navel orange worm using the inward only application method on the outer rows. Future studies may examine if slowing the application speed when spraying inward only might help improve tree coverage and control of pests. A caveat. The gear up throttle down method has not been studied in orchards with large canopies such as mature walnuts, pistachios, or hedgerow almonds. Previous to this study, work focused on dormant applications in medium sized trees such as plums and apples. For aerial applications, the main BMPs are to avoid overspraying irrigation drainage ditches and to communicate with a pilot so they know not to spray when someone is irrigating. You always want to make sure a pilot has a current map of a treatment site before he begins the application. That map should show residences, waterways, or other sensitive sites that he needs to be familiar with. It's really difficult for a pilot to tell when he's up in the air if there's been changes or whether or not a field is being irrigated. Especially if they have never been there before, these field maps are very important to make sure they are aware of these sensitive sites. Those are the most important tools you can use to minimize spray drifts. Also be sure to use the lowest label rate on the insecticide that you're applying to an orchard. In many cases, a pesticide label specifies a range for how much product can be applied to a field. By using the lowest amount, you have less amount of product that has the potential to run off an orchard. I'll also mention mixing and loading. This is not a huge source of runoff, but it can of course lead to off-site movement in the wintertime. So mix and load on grass or some other impervious surface. And don't mix or spray when it can reach a drain well or any other kind of water body when filling the spray tank. And then there's spill cleanup. Of course, it's very important. Any kind of spill that comes off of a spray fill up can make its way into a waterway after a storm. So make sure you do that cleanup promptly just to prevent any movement from that treatment site. Most equipment problems come from two things, worn out nozzles and clogged strainers on those nozzles. Once those basic things are taken care of, a sprayer is brought back to the manufacturer's specifications. So the takeaway point from this is that sprayer maintenance is really important for good calibration. New orchard sprayer technologies are also available that can help manage spray drift. Target sensing sprayers have had considerable studies performed on this equipment. The main benefit is that this allows for the spray to be shut off between tree gaps. When this occurs, there's less spray going on in the orchard, hence less spray landing on the ground that could be vulnerable to runoff and storm events. However, when you have solid orchards or no gaps between trees, the benefits are greatly reduced. The idea with target sensing technology is that you're putting the same amount on the trees but less into the air between the trees so there's less going into the atmosphere. And since there is less going onto the ground, that reduces the amount of potential runoff. Studies have been done on target sensing sprayer that show a 15 to 45 percent reduction in the total amount of pesticide applied to a field. And of course, when there's less pesticide applied to the field, that means there's less pesticide that's vulnerable to runoff through either rain or irrigation drainage. The downside to target sensing sprayers is it's not cheap. It's about $18,000 to retrofit an existing sprayer. However, if you have small trees or wide spacing, you can easily pay back that cost in a matter of years. Adopting these BMPs for surface water protection may seem like a lot of work. But when you think about it, they are common sense, practical approaches that are ready to be used in your orchard today. 